health is not an end in itself. It is important if it becomes a means towards achieving human well-being. It is in this context that we need to deconstruct development models in India. We need to ask the questions, is growth really changing the lives and impacting the lives of those at the bottom of the economic change? Hello and welcome to the Ministers of Change. I'm Shireen Bhan. This week we travelled through Gujarat to see how public-private partnership in the healthcare space is bringing down infant mortality. Nobody in this state, whatever remote corner, should die for want of critical care. We examine if the government is going beyond rhetoric to impart good quality education. They are being given annual dose of training through the satellite. And we analyze the Modi model of development. Bijli, Sadak, Pani. Serious improvement in quality of life has not yet become a serious political issue. Public-private partnership, that is Narendra Modi's mantra. Whether it's developing infrastructure in the state to facilitate industrialization or delivering health care. Core to the state administration's emphasis on the PPP model is the recognition of the state's deficiencies and making an attempt to bridge those by leveraging the strength of the private sector. My government is to serve the society. Development must be a movement. You can't play your five-day test cricket nowadays. Nowadays we are living in the time of 2020. Almost 3,000 women die every year in Gujarat while delivering babies. The state infant mortality rate according to the 2009 data is 48 deaths per thousand live births. This figure being higher than that of other industrialized states like Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. Studies suggest that most of these deaths occur due to the delay in delivery of health services and the acute shortage of qualified gynecologists. To combat the first deficit, the government launched the 108 Emergency Ambulance Service. On 1st Jan 2008, we had 53 108 services. Today, we have 453 and we are adding 50 more. Maternal emergencies we handle roughly 2.5 lakh every year. And if you ask me, the address of about 20,000 infants born in last little over two years, the address is on board 108. Emergency medical technician ko puri training di gayi hoti hai, aur wo patient ko lekar uska se pura virus check karta hai. Virus check karne ke baad usko hamare jo ERCP call center ke andar bhejte hue hote hain, usse conference karke usko jo dawai ki जो प्री हॉस्पिटल केयर की जरूरत होती है उसको दे, देते हुए हॉस्पिटल तक सेफ पहुंचाते हैं जो 100 वार्ड की सुविधा चालू करी है ये बहुत अच्छी बहुत है। अच्छी तुरंत ही फोन करने पर तुरंत आके खड़ी हो जाती है मैं जब भी जितने भी पेशेंट लाता हूं और कब भी कोई भी टाइम पे लाता हूं तो तुरंत यहां का स्टाफ हाजिर होता है और तुरंत ही उनको अपने घर के हिसाब से घर की तरह रख के ना उनकी ट्रीटमेंट करते हैं एंड टू ब्रिज द गैप ऑफ ट्रेन मेडिकल स्टाफ द गवर्नमेंट लॉन्च द चिरंजीवी योजना इन 2007 under this scheme, women below the poverty line can go to impaneled private nursing homes for delivery and the cost of this is borne by the state government. I have done MOU with the government in which the government give us rupees 2 lakh 80 thousands per 100 deliveries per year. In, uh, which includes all the fees medicines or operating charges which whichever be included and in this scheme we doesn't take any money from the patients while one criticism of the scheme has been that it continues to be restricted to the urban and semi-urban centers there are women like usha ben of baddi village near sanand who have benefited from the chiranjeevi yojana for her, delivering a child under proper medical supervision is now a reality. And it doesn't stop at that. Under the government's Bal Sakha Yojana, infants up to one year of age are covered for pediatric care at affiliated clinics as well. The 
आके तपास की फिर सिस्टर ने दवा हमने बताई कि इस तरफ करो कि हमने तपास करा के यहाँ दवा चाहती वहाँ भी तपास थे थे यहाँ भी तपास थे थे इसकी तरह अच्छा लगता था कि ये दिल बड़ी यहाँ दुख उपरी तरह में रिक्शा करी नहीं यहाँ वह बता परिवार साथ है तो यहाँ सारी रीते डिलीवरी थई जी बेकल लग में बारक बद्ध सरस सारी तो थईगी सारी तो हमारी सेवा करी थी अन्न पैसा में कुछ सुन नहीं आप लोग मफत हमारे बीपीएल कार्ड तो इन ऐसा भी हमने मफत सुबह वर्थ है सा The TuneGB Yojana, implemented in 2006, has been recognised for its innovations on the service delivery front. But a CAG report in 2011 has found that the Yojana has fallen short of its own targets. Moreover, the number of doctors impanelled under this Yojana have also fallen in some districts. Private clinics don't find it profitable enough to be part of this government scheme. On the other side, Critics say that privatization of healthcare in the state will only undermine public health care administration. But the Modi government is clear they want to revamp health care in the state of Gujarat, whether public or private. That is secondary. Out of 6 lakh uh, and odd deliveries, only 95 uh, mothers' death, deaths occurred. In normal circumstances, it would have been more than 900. That is more important. So what? how much cost do you put on one mother's life? I don't think CAG has an answer to this. As far as the other part is concerned, I think in a state where you do not have sufficient number of uh, specialist doctors, this was the only way out. In terms of developed states, Gujarat has one of the lowest number of medical seats. Only about eight seats for a population of over 100,000. Over 1,200 students leave the state every year for medical education. To counter this, the government is now expanding capacity in existing colleges and setting up eight new medical super speciality and nursing colleges to plug the human resource gap. In the meantime, it is working to upgrade the physical infrastructure by pushing community and primary health care centers to go in for ISO certification. This primary health care center in Jethalpur in Ahmedabad district is the third one to be accredited and is regularly put through inspections to ensure quality. See, we will attend a meeting of all the staff members every Saturday. What is the progress of that week? Uh, if uh, any case increase is there, so there are chances of every week, any neonatal death, any infant death, so we will get it from the staff member. So this is weekly and every month there is a meeting at the district level of all medical officers of the PSCs. So what they have done during the month, they will send the report, we will uh, analyze it. And if anything wrong, then we will take the action, corrective access. For Modi, running the state like a corporation means systems, processes, targets and results are key. And not all monitoring is left to third party agencies. Every year, all state bureaucrats and ministers led by the chief minister go on a yatra of sorts. They randomly visit selected schools across districts and administer tests to students to check on the quality of education being imparted. Apart from the school rating, suppose if it is a primary class of fourth standard this year and last year was a third standard, so the teacher who taught in this class in the last year, he or she is also given a separate grade in that subject. So each teacher also knows ki what has been my grade. And of course, for the first two years, 2009 and 2010, this campaign went on. We haven't so far linked any punitive action with the Gunotsav results. But henceforward, we are planning to do it. We would like to link the Gunotsav results with performance appraisal. We would like to link it with the promotion of teachers. We would like to link it with their request transfers. So only then, the teachers would become uh, very conscious about the importance of teaching in the class. It is with this in mind that the teacher training program was launched in 2007. Every summer vacation, nearly 2 lakh teachers in 4,000 centers across the state are put through a rigorous study schedule to upgrade their skills. In some districts, the program is conducted virtually with master trainers in Gandhinagar interacting with teachers via satellite connection. जो टीचर से वो अपने स्कूल में जाके अपने क्लास में जाके बच्चों को ठीक तरह से अच्छी तरह से पढ़ाए और बिना झिझक के सरलता से पढ़ाए उसके हिसाब से ये एक म्युनिसिपल कॉरपोरेशन ने एक आयोजन बनाया और 14 दिन की ये ट्रेनिंग चल रही है वो ट्रेनिंग होने से 
टीचर्स को जो कुछ नए तराज में नई शिक्षण तराज से जो पढ़ाना चाहिए किस तरह पढ़ाना चाहिए वो बताते हैं हमारे अगर स्कूल में कोई प्रॉब्लम है तो हम यहाँ बताते हैं कि हमारे स्कूल में इस स्टूडेंट का ये प्रॉब्लम है तो हमें क्या करना चाहिए और ये सब हमें बताते हैं वो इस तरह हम सबके प्रॉब्लम्स को सॉल्व करते हैं एक दूसरे के साथ बैठते हैं तो जो दिक्कतें पड़ती है इसकी चर्चा होती है तो दिक्कत में से हम बाहर आ सकते हैं शेयर हो सकता है और नई नई टेक्निक हमको जानने को मिलती है दे आर टीचिंग अस थ्रू द वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंस सो क्या होता है कि हम उसकी जो टेन थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड थर्टी थाउजेंड फीस है वो नॉर्मल पीपल अफोर्ड नहीं कर पाते तो थ्रू दैट मीडिया वी कैन गेट ऑल But there are some benchmarks that Gujarat has not been able to achieve despite its double digit GDP growth rate. The dropout rate of children from school has increased. 40% of Gujarat's children are malnourished and the child sex ratio continues to be skewed. All over the country what we call development or what is called vikas is actually vipas bijli sadak pani. This is what has been reduced to education health livelihood opportunities and serious improvement in quality of life has not yet become a serious political issue anywhere in the country the same holds for gujarat so if the quality of roads improve you have more less in, uninterrupted electricity you have better quality of water which is a, a real issue in saurashtra then the government is seen to be performing and things like quality of education health services etc have not been a politicized issue and unless an issue becomes politicized it will it's not addressed in democratic functioning jab 2001 ke census report aaya tha tab gujarat ki halat koi zyada achhi nahi thi humne pichle 5 saal se lagatar andolan chalaya kanuni vyavasthaye ki समाज के लोगों को चलाया हर शादी में शपथ समारोह होता है कि हमारे परिवार में भ्रूण हत्या नहीं करेंगे और उसका एक नतीजा ये हुआ है कि अब हम करीब करीब 960 तक पहुंचे हैं और मुझे विश्वास है कि हम आने वाले दिनों में हम आने वाले दिनों में वो स्थिति को सुधार देंगे a movement in its seventh year where state officials travel from village to village to encourage parents to enroll the girl child in school this movement along with other state sponsored programs have resulted in a 13% hike in the female literacy rate in gujarat in fact according to the 2011 census figures female literacy in gujarat now stands at 70% much higher than the national average of 65% Coming up next on the Ministers of Change we examine Narendra Modi's balancing act. that prides itself for its demographic dividend creating employment for the masses continues to be its biggest challenge according to numbers provided by the gujarat labor and employment department the number of unemployed people in the state stands at 8.9 lakh and this number is indicative only of those registered on the state employment exchanges but a challenge bigger than tracking unemployment is dealing with employability of the youth between january and november 2010 2.75 lakh educated people registered themselves as unemployed so far we have trained about 1.5 lakh people in scope in the last 2 to 2 and a half years then there is a gujarat knowledge society which is again engaged with the task of arranging short term job oriented programs for our graduates and for our 12 standard pass outs also now those courses are arranged with much less fees 
with the help of private training partners using the premises of existing schools and colleges and all the marketing cost is borne by the government also we have started uh, a kind of a placement drive in colleges and before the placement we would like uh, students to be given as some sort of a finishing school type of course and so we give them a small module of pre-placement course in which their communication skills are updated uh, they are taught about uh, the importance of having a good personality etiquette mannerism a decade ago, the state missed out on becoming an IT BPO hub because the industry surveys found Gujarati youth not adequately qualified or conversant in English. An indication of a small change that might have taken place is Narayana Murthy's expression of interest in setting up an Infosys Research Centre in the state. Narendra Modi in turn has offered Murthy the top job at the state's Youth Incubation Centre. The programs currently in place appeal to uh, the skills enhancement based upon market need and I find that as a very progressive thought that let's not try and skill people up. Often what happens in government is you create great training programs but there's no employment after the training programs and here it's the other way around. The market is driving the need for the right sort of skills which are then being given to uh, the people of Gujarat. This remains a key focus of the government and I'm sure they'll be able to address it very very soon. And market forces are driving a lot of the changes that the state is seeing. Just last year the Modi government set up the Gujarat Skills Development Mission, the nodal agency to coordinate between the private and the public sector. His actionability agenda is so high, I think that's what we need to learn. It's as if he's running a corporate. He is pushing projects, he is getting projects to be delivered, whether it's in irrigation or education or child welfare. So he's got multiple streams of projects and he's, he's driving projects exactly in the same manner as we drive projects in our engineering sector or train manufacturing sector. So he's taking the route of project completion, which is action on the ground. Modi is not just a CEO, but a chief minister. Then responsibilities are quite different. He has to look into the development and welfare of the you know, state as a whole. On that front, I'll only say this. He has not hawked his mother's pearls. He's looked after the family jewels, added to them. But he's not the one who set the Gujarat's golden wheel spinning. It was spinning before him. There is no doubt that there is enormous hype. There is no doubt that this development has come at the cost of human rights abuses. There is no doubt that Narendra Modi is a, master, is a spin master, is a spin doctor. At the same time, even his worst critics at a local level, when I spoke to a Congress Sarpanch in a village, because he was not addressing a press conference in Delhi, he was the first one to say, yes, there is more electricity than we ever got. Yes, the water hasn't come, but there's more effort to bring water than ever was the case. Yes, the quality of roads has improved. So, if you try and gather the truth at the ground level, the fact is that for ordinary people, the experience has improved somewhat. Almost all of Gujarat's villages have 24 by 7 electricity. 25% of all households and tribal areas have been given tap water supply in just three years. Farmers across the state have dedicated power supply and small but meaningful interventions like building check dams and subsidizing expensive drip irrigation has resulted in a 9.7 agriculture growth in the state. Uh, there, are, there are over 4 crore people in, uh, in government of, uh, in, in Gujarat at the moment and a fair share of them actually, about 20% or so from my memory, actually are below poverty line. So what can they do to improve the quality of life and the livelihoods of those people is a key consideration for any, any, any government, no matter which brand of politics they actually refer to. The industry you can market for a while, you can go on for 5 years or 10 years, even beyond that. But I don't think the environment issue you can hide at that level. Either to development may come, or other side, if there are sampradayik madhved, then this country will be a problem for the country, then that's not the case. We have to think about general, we have to think about society, we have to think about the country.
it's not only about uh, literacy and uh, you know uh, gender ratios and stuff like that or nutrition it's about things like that infrastructurally where you've got practically all weather roads linking most villages you've got 100% electricity genuinely reaching reaching villages uh, these are aspects that contribute to human development and i think there has been uh, it has not been an either or situation they have gone hand in hand the Jyoti Gram Yojana has begun to show visible results, but a multitude of social sector schemes launched by the Modi administration will show results only in the next couple of years. But Narendra Modi has a crucial test awaiting as he goes to the people once again next year. Will Gujarat give Narendra Modi another chance at leading the state? Will Narendra Modi's brand of development economics pay off? That is a question that the people of Gujarat will answer next year. But for now, our journey through Gujarat ends right here. Next week, we travel to India's largest state, Rajasthan. So join us then on the Ministers of Change. Rajasthan has a progressive side to it, but it, this cannot be fitted in into any of the conventional standards or benchmarks of a progressive state. Ashok Galot has been a very low profile chief minister, doing his job quietly, but at the same time suffering some people because he doesn't enjoy that kind of authority. Plugging Rajasthan out of the uh, you know, earlier so-called Bimaru states, really putting it in the, in the front end of the states where it, it will become a destination for a lot of investments.